Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I'll be talking about custom involvement, resource flexibility, and capital intensity. Now, as part of the process strategy decisions, process structure, custom involvement, resource flexibility, and capital intensity are important dimensions of these decisions. We have looked at process structure decisions elsewhere. Now, what we're going to look for is what are the potential ways in which organizations can engage these other aspects within their process strategy decisions, starting with customer involvement. Now, customer involvement within processes can have possible advantages and disadvantages. Organizations can ensure that processes are structured in such a way that in some of these processes, customers have direct input in terms of what the needs might be. So if we take the example of organizations like IKEA, they have ensured that the final assembly process is now uh, done by the customers. So customers are actively involved in one of the processes uh, as part of the organization. You also have many companies or service organizations who have set up automated machines. Um, for example, in banks, you have uh, automated teller machines or you have uh, self checkout uh, within your, your typical grocery chains. And these are examples of customer involvement in services. Now the advantage from uh, involving customers in the processes is that it increases the net value to the customer. Ultimately, the objective of operations and supply chain management is to create value. And by doing uh, so, which is by involving customers in the processes, you end up creating uh, aspects within your processes which adds to the value that customers perceive or what customers find in the overall offering that your company has. It allows for better quality and faster delivery because customers can determine exactly what they want. Hence, you can ensure that all the processes are geared towards uh, providing the kind of quality that the customer is expecting. And you can be much more closer to the expectations of the customer. It also allows faster delivery because you are in some way getting the information for what the customer wants from the customer himself or herself. And, and hence you can create the required offerings based on that understanding. It allows for greater flexibility because the process divergence that is expected when customers involved will be higher. They will expect, different customers will expect different things. And you can create these flexible offerings uh, by having customer being involved in that overall uh, offerings that your company has. And many times these uh, kinds of setups also allow you to reduce the cost associated with providing highly flexible offerings to the customers. On the shipping side and inventory side, you find reduction in costs uh, because the inventory that you otherwise would have kept much of the redundant inventory doesn't have to be there because you want to keep things which customers uh, demand and customers want, and customers are informing you what they want. So hence, you can reduce those inventories that don't need to be there. And likewise, shipping cost also, because customers actually might be able to uh, come and take the delivery from you many times, uh, which is the case which I was talking about earlier, about things where customers might be able to um, assemble their final product. So the shipping cost for an unassembled furniture going in a package, would be quite different from an assembled uh, furniture which would be transported to the customer's location. And finally, because customers are involved in the process, they provide you information of the demand. Hence, the uncertainty in the demand reduces, which in turn helps an organization to coordinate across the supply chain. Because every organization in the supply chain can now have an idea of what exactly the demand looks like. But there are also possible disadvantages of customer involvement. And uh, typically, one of the major disadvantages is that when you're involving customers in your operations, it can be disruptive because customers might demand different uh, things. And hence, you have to have the ability to create divergence in the process as customer demand comes in. It can become quite challenging to manage time and volume when customers are involved because now you have to ensure that multiple requirements are being met within the process structure that you have, which also creates challenges for measuring quality because a standardized process is much easier in terms of quality measurement as against 
processes that have a lot more divergence. And the way an organization is able to handle these things, which is whether the quality measurement issue, whether the timing and volume issue, disruptions, is by having higher interpersonal skills. So an expectation in organizations where they have higher involvement of customers is that they should have uh, higher uh, interpersonal skills to handle these requirements and handle these involvement uh, and process divergence associated with them. And finally, you will have multiple locations to be able to involve customers, to be closer to the customers as and when they require, they can be uh, part of that process, which can add to the cost from the asset investment point of view. Now we look at resource flexibility decisions. When we talk about resource flexibility decisions, we can think of it in terms of flexible workforce and flexible equipment. Now flexible workforce are these cross-trained uh, highly skilled workers who actually can do multiple things. They might be doing it at the same workstation where they're, they're located, or they could be moving around uh, to multiple workstations and getting things done. Now, this has become an essence for much of the lean operations because you expect uh, uh, multitasked uh, workers who are able to handle multiple things. So that allows an organization to provide offerings to customers at a lower cost and uh, ensure that there's an ownership across a broader set of activities by one worker. The other way in which you can manage resource flexibility is by having flexible equipment. And flexible equipment essentially could be something where you have a machine which actually can provide multiple products, can produce multiple products, and that allows a co company to create customized offerings based on whatever the needs of the market might be. Finally, capital intensity is where you are investing in assets, capital assets, which can then help an organization to provide the kind of offering that might be most suited for their competitive priorities that they have set up. So for example, on one end, you could have automating, automated manufacturing processes, which could be in the form of fixed automation or in the form of flexible automation. And the difference is that in a fixed automation, essentially the focus is on economies of scale. So you will set up these huge machines, which then can create the same product or make the same product at a lower cost again and again. And hence you can create economies of scale. Flexible automation on the other hand are these programmable machines, typically industrial robots, who, that can produce different types of products as and when there are requirements for them. And here, the focus is really not on economies of scale because you're not trying to make the same product again and again, but instead it's more in the form of economies of scope where uh, you're trying to be able to make multiple products using this particular uh, machine that you have here. And similarly, automating service processes, you have uh, investments made by organizations such as Disney uh, in service organizations where a lot of investment in technology has been put in place so that much of uh, service processes can be automated. You know, so in, in Disney, for example, they use internet and they use the overall uh, connectivity across their different theme park locations to ensure that they are able to manage different requirements that might be there at different places. Waiting lines can be addressed using these kinds of automated uh, processes. So that's one way in which capital intensity can help organizations uh, manage their strategy and process strategy in a much better way. And as I mentioned earlier, economies of scope uh, is something where we are interested in being able to make multiple products. And when we are able to make multiple products at a lower cost than making a single product at a time is the situation which refers to economies of scope. So these are things where uh, we could be using industrial robots, making multiple products using one robot. Therefore, you are creating economies of scope or you have complementary products who all have similar platform, but they might differ in terms of their final uh, few aesthetics that they might be having as part of that offering. But yet, because they have some standardization uh, that helps in creating economies of scope, which means making multiple types of products with some common platform, in a more economical way than if you were to make each of these different models uh, very differently, like in automotive industry. So in essence, in this uh, presentation, I focused on 
some of the important process strategy decisions that organizations have to think about as they uh, plan the way in which they would like to address their competitive priorities and ensure that they have these uh, competitive capabilities that are closer to the kind of priority that is expected by the market. Thank you.